That is the ugliest creature I have ever seen. And it was naked. I'm going to destroy you. No need to worry. I will protect the kingdom. My hair's doing that thing we both love. Whoa! Nobody ever goes into the dark forest. I'm not afraid of them. That's right. An army approaches. Sound the alarm. The potion's dangerous. It destroys order. I want it! Ah, you should see your face! Wait, I can show you. Ah! Ah! Wild thing. Dawn! Release my sister! Give me the potion by moondown, or you'll never see your sister again. We must rescue Dawn! Who's with me? Prepare to be shaken. I say, hey, I be going today. I be fast around the way. Uh oh. You want an adventure? You got it. Thank you, Tiny Rabbit. Spit. I know one thing. I love you. Sugar pie, honey punch. You know that I love Meet my mother. Don't you have a comb? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> oh, I think I got one of your antenna. You fight well. Wish I could say the same for you. What do you mean? I don't know. I was expecting more. What? Just kill me now. Make it quick. <laughs> Prisoner. No eating! Oh. Brutus! Oh. Hi, Evan. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you. Congratulations on Strange Magic. Thanks, thanks. You, you guys all got to see the trailer right now. What'd you think? Looks good. <laughs> this was such a fun film. What was your favorite part of working on it? Oh man, I, I loved the, the whole idea behind it. When it was originally pitched to me, it was, um, it was pitched as Beauty and the Beast if he didn't turn into the prince at the end. And I thought, I, already, you know, I love it already. I think it, it takes the classic fairy tale and really just like flips it upside down on its head. My character is a fairy princess, but she's sort of the anti-fairy princess. She's very spirited, very independent. She's a sword fighting. She's, you know, going to the dark forest to save her sister. And, um, you know, she doesn't like the Prince Charming. And I think that's kind of where these um, animated films are going. You know, um, they're becoming more hip with the times and, you know, their messages are changing. Um, so, and, I, and also the, the music. There's six decades worth of uh, songs in the film. Um, so, you know, there's, there's something for everyone. Somebody will, no matter who you are, you'll hear a song and be nostalgic about it. And I'm a singer. I've been singing as long as I've been acting. So, you know, any chance that I have to combine the two, um, I'm always uh, up for and excited about. So That was one of my questions. You do sing a lot in the film, and you've sang a lot before. Do you ever want to record an album or have any musical aspirations? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I've been writing songs for years, and, uh, yeah, I've recorded a few I've always been very protective over them. I like having, you know, a creative outlet that's just kind of mine that doesn't get tainted or corrupted. But um, I'm hoping, yeah, that uh, one day. Your character, Marianne, she's kind of a feminist princess in a way, if you will, because she's independent, she doesn't need her prince charming. And right. how important is it to you to have roles like that or strong female characters? And um, Very important. And, you know, I have a, I have a 10 year old. Um, little sister, so I was really excited to make this film and, you know, to put a, uh, uh, a female lead in an animated film out there that was like Marianne. And, because, you know, she's somebody that, you know, when I was a kid, I would have loved to have watched and probably would have, you know, dressed up as and, you know, played pretend in the backyard and, you know, I would have been Marianne. 
She's a great role model and aspirational princess for modern girls these days. What was it like working with a legend like George Lucas? This is kind of a departure from a lot of the other things that he's done, and I imagine that was quite an experience. Well, it's, it's weird when you do an animated film because I actually just met George Lucas for the first time today, and I've been working on this <laughs> film for maybe three years. Wow. And I was never in the same room with any of the actors. You know, Alan Cumming and myself are in almost every scene together, and we have this incredible arc and this amazing chemistry, and we just met for the first time on this film today. I'd met him before, but, um, <laughs> you know, never, uh, never did a scene with him. We do, you know, a couple of musical numbers, duets, harmonizing, but all from um, opposite ends of the country, so it's a, it's a weird process at times. Do you find voicing a character, like in this film, more challenging sometimes than a typical movie role where you're interacting with somebody else? In this, you're in a booth by yourself, yeah. and you have to have all this emotion. Uh, it, it can be challenging, yeah, because, you know, when you're a film actor, you rely on your body and your eyes and your face and everything to convey all this emotion. But, you know, when you're just in a booth, it's you have to channel all of that just into your voice. Um, and in this case, we also had a camera on us the whole time, so uh, the animators could take our characteristics and our facial expressions and, you know, incorporate them into the character. Uh, so it's fun. As an actor, it kind of just gives you permission to be completely over the top <laughs> and, and to go all out and to be silly. And, um, and you just get to use your imagination, you know? Uh, the only... Um, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> What word am I looking for? Uh, for? A reference that I had for the character was a drawing. You know, I just I just had a drawing of Marianne. I didn't get to see what the world was going to be like. You know, I didn't get to immerse myself in it. I just had to go there in my mind. Um, so you know, you tap into how you were when you were a kid and you were you know playing make believe. It's funny because you look a bit like her with the short hair and everything. I was wondering <laughs> when they decided to have you voice it, did they change the character at all, or is it kind of set? Or um, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think they saw a couple. I have some YouTube videos out of me singing. Um, I know I did a, I did a, a musical film across the universe that right. was all set around Beatles songs, but that was oh a decade ago now. And the songs were a little softer and a little prettier. And I, I do have this other side that's much more gritty and, and uh, like a rocker. And I had a, I think they saw a video of me singing Janis Joplin. And then that's when they offered me the role. Um, so no, I think they just came to me because they thought, oh, fairy with, with an edge. Evan Rachel Wood, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how it happened. <laughs> and I liked how there was a little bit of everything music-wise, from pop to original music to yes. classics, that sort of thing. Did you have a favorite performance that you did? Um, actually, the whole uh, the whole cast kind of agrees that um, the song "Strange Magic" was the most fun, and it's a duet with Alan and and I. And um, I just I don't know I, the whole sequence in the film I think is beautiful. Uh, obviously, this is Lucasfilm's first animated movie, so we can promise you that the animation is going to be some of the best that you've you know seen to date. Um, and uh, I don't know, there is there's just something about that song. I, I defy any of you to see the movie and to not get it stuck in your head. So It's catchy. <laughs> yes. Um, your character, Marianne, has sworn off romance in the film, and she just wants to be on her own. What's your own philosophy when it comes to relationships and romance? <laughs> oh, man. Do you have a couple hours? I've got so many philosophies. Sure, we have lots of time. Um, well, I don't know. I think the thing I related the most um, to in this and with uh, my character was that you know she gets her heart terribly terribly broken but instead of letting it um, defeat her she decides she's going to come back even stronger she's going to reinvent herself she's going to take this as an opportunity to really find herself and to find the inner strength and you know the phoenix rising from the ashes and I think um, I don't know that's kind of my philosophy uh, you know, even in the worst moments, you have to, you know, look within yourself and, and see what am I learning from this experience? You know, how can this make me stronger? What can I take away? Um, and I kind of think that's what she does. In fact, she uses that opportunity to sing Kelly Clarkson <laughs> <just> stronger. <laughs> and I have a whole new respect for Kelly Clarkson because that is an incredibly difficult song to sing. And I was about seven months pregnant when I recorded it. So I had no room for air. <laughs> and it was, it was challenging. <laughs> Well, you did a great job. Thank I you. wanted to ask you about that. In addition to being an actress, you're also a mother. Yes. How do you balance it all? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I actually feel like I'm, I'm balancing more things now than I ever have. But it's kind of, it's kind of great. 
because you're motivated. You have inspiration. So you just you just do it. You don't drag your feet anymore, you know, because you can't. Um, so it, he's really, my son is the best thing that ever happened to me. I've never been a better person. I've never been more focused and um, excited about work. So uh, it's, it's a blessing. It is, yeah. Has he seen the movie yet? Not yet, but I am excited. I'm, I'm. He's a little young for the wrestler, so <laughs> I, he's he's almost. He's only a year and a half. <laughs> I, so I was excited to do something that you know, once he's old enough and he can kind of comprehend it, he could say, "That's my mom. That's my mom. She's the fairy princess." Um, so yeah, it's nice. Does being a mom affect the kind of roles that you take on or the projects that you take on? Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. But I think now I'm probably. I, I'm more open to doing um, more family-friendly um, kid movies. Definitely, yeah. Um, I remember way back in the day, the movie 13, a favorite of mine. Oh, way back in the day. <laughs> I was young when I saw it. No, I mean, but, it was. I yeah. was 14 years old, yeah. yeah. Um, what advice would you have for teenage girls today? Oh, man. So many, so many. Um, well, I don't know. I guess the advice that I... I wish I had taken a heart when I was that age, was that it gets better. I'm hearing so many stories about, um, you know, kids getting bullied or, you know, uh, uh, you know, pretty pretty tragic stories and how it, how it affects their self-esteem. And all I can say is that it gets better and uh, life doesn't end at high school or, or middle school. It's quite the opposite. You know, there's a whole world out there. There's so many things to experience and see. And um, don't be afraid of the things that make you different because those are the things that will take you the farthest um, and are what make you special and, and unique. And you should embrace those things and to not be afraid to be seen because um, most people are afraid of those you know, deep, dark things that they think they need to be ashamed of. And really, they're just looking for somebody else to do it first so that they feel safe. And, you know, just be brave, I would say, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, this was actually a question somebody sent in on Twitter. What are three things that you want to teach your son? Three things I want to teach my son. Uh, to be kind, to be empathetic, to have compassion, um, and to respect himself. You can't take care of anybody else on unless you're taking care of yourself first. Um, so it's okay to be selfish occasionally. Uh, yeah, probably probably those things. Respect for yourself and for others. That's a good one. Uh, you've gotten to work with so many people during your career, but is there anybody out there that you're dying to work with or collaborate with? Oh, man. I would love to work with Wes Anderson. He's kind of my favorite. Wes, um, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're watching this. Uh, yeah, that would... That's probably at the top of the list, yeah. There's so many, I can't, when you put me on the spot, it just all goes out the window, you know? That's okay, that's all good. And um, what other future plans and projects do you have coming up? Uh, well, I'm uh, on a TV show that just got picked up now, it's gonna be on HBO, <clears throat> called Westworld. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, J.J. Abrams, is <laughs> executive. Once or twice. Producing it. Um, I'm very excited about that. It's about um, artificial intelligence, and uh, it's starring Anthony Hopkins and Ed Harris and myself. It's an incredible cast and, and team behind it. Um, so I have that. I finished a film, uh, oh, wow, it was already last year, with Ellen Page. That's a uh, very intense, dramatic thriller called Into the Forest, where we play sisters. And I can guarantee you've never seen anything like it. You won't know what hit you after that movie's over. Highly, highly recommend going to see it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm working on music. I'm writing my own stuff and just, yeah, um, having fun. Do you have any preference over drama or comedy or sci-fi or anything that you really... Uh, no, no, that? really. I just, you know, I want to connect to the material. I want to connect to the characters. I want to feel like I'm, I'm doing something that... Uh, it's going to make people think and make people talk. I, I think I've always chosen things and done things that may seem slightly controversial or uh, slightly dark or slightly weird. But um, to me, I don't want everyone to like it. I want people to be talking about it. I want people to debate. I want it to, you know, make conversation. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. It doesn't really matter what the genre is. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I think we're going to have some audience questions, I okay. believe. <laughs> I know some people have some things they want to ask, so we're going to Or not at up. all. <laughs> <laughs> or we can just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> what are your weekend plans? <laughs> um, anybody have any questions in the audience? Hi. 
I love you. You're awesome. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> like Mildred Pierce, like oh. hands down, like yes. Thank you. Yes. Any advice for when you're in the room? And as an actor, I mean, like you're just there and you're like, uh, you get nervous. Any thoughtful words for someone who's just starting? It's a, it's a, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to explain. I mean, there's certain things that I do, and I think this is why I do it and why I'm an artist and why I sing and why I act because language only takes me so far. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll put on a, a song and, and I transcend to another place. It's like, I'm not very religious, but it's the only time I really feel like I'm connecting to something bigger than myself that's very divine and I kind of just surrender. And, um, so in those moments when I'm nervous, I just, it's, you just kind of have to go into like a meditative place and you have to forget everything else and completely lose yourself in something and you'll feel yourself connect to the other actor or to, you know, a, a feeling that you've, you've buried deep down inside of yourself. You know, you just have to have no fear and no embarrassment. You can't be afraid of embarrassment. That's the biggest thing, I think, is um, not worrying what anybody's going to think about you, just being as honest as possible, uh, really. Yeah, it's the same thing as relationships. You know, just let yourself be seen. Let yourself be vulnerable. That's when you're going to connect to people the most. So... I know it's easier said than done, but um, that's what you're striving for, yeah. yeah. What have been some of your uh, favorite film performances this year? Come over here. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? I just, I watched I Origins on the way over here on the plane and I wept like a baby. I thought everyone did an incredible job with that movie and it was an excellent use of motion picture soundtrack at the end. I, uh, that Radiohead song, I don't know if anyone knows it. It's one of my all time favorites. Um, so probably that. That sticks out right now. <laughs> Can you tell I'm like I get I get like I just told you to be brave, but I'm super shy. That's why I'm laughing and giggling and acting like you know. <laughs> it's actually easier to be brave when you have a script and when it's all mapped out and where you know where the conversation's gonna go. It almost gives you permission to like be very bold. But you know, when I'm in this you know scenario, I get just much gave me an idea, more actually. shy. I read that you're a big karaoke fan. What is your go-to song? Uh, I always sing I always sing Janis Joplin, Peace of My Heart, or Four Non Blondes, What's Up? And because of that, Linda Perry saw a video of me doing it, and then she's asked me to, I've performed with her a couple of times since then. I even performed for, uh, the Four Non Blondes, What's Up? song with Linda Perry on the wow. piano. She let me sing it. It was pretty wild. That's the power of Twitter. That's social media now. It's pretty wild. Do you want to sing in right now? We can put you in the spot. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure everybody would love to hear it, but you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> you definitely don't have to. That's a lot. Okay. That's a lot. You're usually drunk when you karaoke. <laughs> Not me. Yeah. I mean, you are usually yeah. me. drunk. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> You were talking about Twitter. Do you use it a lot and read it and talk to your fans? I saw that you retweeted me, so thank you for that. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? I love Twitter, and I really uh, naysayed it when it first came out. I just didn't understand. Like most things, it's like, oh, it's new and different. I hate it. Um, but once I actually got into it, uh, it's an incredible tool. I've, I've made friends through Twitter. I've connected to people and artists that I love, and we've collaborated, and... You know, like dumb stuff. Like, God, I tweeted Alanis Morissette the other day and she started following me and I almost died because I <laughs> worshipped her as a child. And this just little thing in the palm of my hand connected me with her in like two seconds. Um, I think it's great. I also, I follow all these, you know, news sites. I, I feel actually more educated and informed because of it. And, um, you know, if some story, dumb story comes out about me, all I have to do is go on to Twitter and you get the story straight from the source and you can, you know, shut it down. So I, I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> With social media, of course, comes sometimes like the haters and critics and that sort of thing. How do you deal with that? Or do you not deal what's with that? Maybe really, you don't have But that. that's what's really interesting. And it kind of reminds me of the whole, um, I don't know if you've heard of Amanda Palmer's The Art of Asking. And she, she gave this awesome TED Talk about it. And she talked about, you know, if you don't make someone do something you ask them to, then you actually get a much better response. And honestly, 
you know, as any artist or actor or whatever, you hear a lot of criticism and a lot of negativity, but on Twitter, watch, now I'm saying this and all I'm gonna get is hate stuff now. On Twitter, I've noticed I, it's mainly positive. It's mainly people that are, you know, making the effort to follow you and they just wanna say, hey, you know, this changed my life or this inspired me or I loved it, you know, it's mainly positive stuff. And anytime it is negative, you can tell that person's a lunatic, right. you know? <laughs> like, you're just like, oh, you're crazy. And then you block them and that's it, you know? It's really like, it's there and then it's gone. So you block them. You're more in control. You're on morning Twitter, you say anything mean. Oh yeah, get yeah. You'll get, and believe me, there's nothing as satisfying as <laughs> hitting that little button. <laughs> What about Instagram and Facebook, and do you do those things as well? Or? I'm not on Instagram. I'm on Husay. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not under my own okay. name. Secret one. Yeah, it's mainly Facebook. I just keep in touch with like friends and family, but Twitter is where I go to connect with, with everyone, and it's great. And what is something that people and fans might not know about you? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a hardcore Disney geek. Yeah? Like, hardcore. What's your favorite Disney movie besides <sighs> this one? Someone asked me that earlier, and it was really difficult to decide. I think I named about four or five. I, I, look, you can have a couple. The Lion King is epic. I cry every time. The Jungle Book, I think Sleeping Beauty is completely underrated. Dumbo. Look, I'm going to name them all. I told you the thing. I can't <laughs> pick, okay? <laughs> I love them all. Um, so I'm kind of a geek. I love cartoons and Disney, and um, which people are usually kind of surprised by. And then they're, they think, oh, you've got this cute little thing, and then they get to know me, and they're like, oh, no, you're serious. You, are, you live your life by Disney. I'm like, yeah. If you, don't, if you don't like Disney, I mean, we have nothing to talk about. I don't, if you don't cry at the end of Lion King, you don't have a soul. Like, I have nothing in common with you, so... It's a deal breaker. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? I think we have one over here. Hi, uh, you mentioned that the only thing that you saw um, before working on the movie was a sketch of the character. Uh, I'm curious if there are any other things that informed your choices in voicing the character. Um, the songs. You know, once I once I saw what Marianne was singing, I mean, I'm, I've been a Heart fan for so long, and she sings straight on in the movie. So I I had an idea that gave me a vibe. Um, but Gary, our director, is really incredible at, at um, backstory and painting a picture for you. And and um, you know, every time we would record a new scene, it was mainly just me and Gary working off of each other. And he would take you know ten minutes to really describe everything that was happening and be incredibly detailed about it. And um, so I really relied on him and, and, uh, and Marius, who did uh, uh, the music. Um, they helped me a lot, yeah. And, you know, inspiration from my own life. So. <laughs> All right, well, I think we are almost out of time, but thank you so much, Evan Rachel Wood, for joining us. Yeah, it was really fun, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And make sure that you guys go see Strange Magic on January 23rd. And anything else you wanna say? And I think you can pre-order the soundtrack right now as well. So there you go. Go get it. <laughs> there will be that. Thank you guys so much yeah. for being here. And thanks for watching online. Thanks. <laughs>